when the ball master have asked me why is it important for children to come along to the temple with uh, their parents and also uh, why we celebrate the Tina ceremony today and why your parents, your grandparents would like all of you to join in today's event. So it is a sign of gratefulness that you have towards your parents, to your grandparents. Being, a ch being children, we have owed a lot of gratitude toward our parents. They have given us the life, the birth to exist in this world. And further, they also have brought you up, raised you up to be who you are today, that you have the opportunity to be human being in a good status, having wealth, having good job, having opportunity to do all good things in life and be able to, have to be happy. So, realizing that they, we have owed a lot of gratitude to our parents, so we should do something in return to repay their gratitude. In the teachings of the Buddha, he expounded that the parents are the first teacher, first and foremost teacher. The parents are the living God at home. You don't need to find God outside or anywhere else. But parents are God. Parents are those who are worthy of respect by the children. Parents are uh, the Brahma. Parents are uh, the God, the deity, the protector, and also the benefactor of the children. Because they have the four sublime states. If the parents do not have this four sublime state, you would not be able to survive up to now. So what are the four sublime state? In Pali language, we call four Brahma Vihara, which means the, the peaceful abode that the parent has. One is Metta, loving kindness or loving friendliness. Second, compassion, compassionate heart that, that the world, they have towards all of us. And thirdly, mudita, sympathetic joy, appreciation. And finally, upeka, equanimity, even-mindedness, equanimous mind. So they love all children equally without discriminating or love one much more than the other. So this is the great quality of the mind that the parents always have toward their children. Realizing this, all children should repay their gratitude in any way. According to the teachings of the Buddha, he said that children should at least follow the footsteps of their parents. For example, your parents, your, your grandparents are devoted, are devoted Buddhists and they have practiced according to the teachings of the Buddha. They live the way of life harmoniously abiding by the virtues and precepts and meditations and wisdom, etc. So, as the children, we should follow them, you know, doing all the things that make them happy. So, this is in terms of how you pay your gratitude to your parents in according to spirituality or spiritual ways of development. On the other hand, you can also repay them in terms of material requisite, which is clothing, fooding, lodging, accommodation, shelter, or medicine that medical care, medical treatment that you can support them because when they are getting older and older, they cannot manage things by themselves. So it is the duty of every, every child to be able to support their children. By so doing, you are, not, you are known as a grateful child. You are known as a grateful children, which the Buddha really appreciate that. So... Also today is very important ceremony that you all have gathered here together. And as you may usually have heard about Bon Katan or Katina ceremony, which we, which we call in the uh, Romanized Pali. So Katina is a festival that takes place during the months of October and November. For 2,500 2, years, families have gathered to take part in the largest alms giving ceremony like this morning. Uh, friends, old friends, new friends, parents, children, grandchildren join together in a celebration on the theme of harmony. 
Katina occurs at the end of Vasa. As you may have known that the monks spent three months arranged retreat in the monastery where they have undertaken to observe without leaving the temple. During these three months retreat, the resident monks of the monastery have been obliged by their rule not to travel unless absolutely necessary. So it's a time for leave taking and extending a welcome. Also as winter approaches, the supporters are checking to see that the basic needs of the Sangha, of the community of monks are being met. It is with regard to the offering of these requisites that this festival comes about. So I'm going to talk about the origin, why the Buddha allowed Katina ceremony to be existed. According to the Buddhist scriptures, a group of 30 pikus, 30 monks, were journeying together with the intention of spending the retreat season with the Buddha. <coughs> However, Vasa began before they reached their destination and it was required that they stop traveling. According to, although they lived harmoniously during the retreat, the pikus were unhappy at not being able to be with the master, the Buddha. When they were allowed to travel again, the Pikus continue on to see the Buddha. Hearing of their unhappy sojourn, he decided to cheer them up by allowing them to roam freely after the rain's retreat to gather clothes for robes. The Buddha knew that nothing is so uplifting as sharing and generosity, and so then established a procedure whereby a Piku could agree among themselves to make a gift of the clothes so acquired to one of the number. And so when they had enough clothes, the Pikus set about shoeing a robe. In those days, the method used involved spreading the pieces of clothes on the frame and stitching them together. This frame was called Katina. So in the Buddha's time, the way they make robe and the way that the monk uh, obtain the rope is very, very hard, you know, in the ancient time of India, 2,500 years back, it was really hard to gain the rope, not like today, the monk easily uh, getting the rope from lay people, just like today, you all have uh, gathering all the materials in order to, do, to offer to the monk, but in the ancient time, in the Buddha's lifetime, it was really hard to get the rope, so the monk have to go and collect uh, different pieces of cloth and then they combine it, they stitch it together and they sew it by themselves. Of course, nowadays some uh, traditions still doing so. From that time until now, lay supporters have made a point of offering cloth at the end of Vasa. It is being allowed that this offering can take place at any time during the four weeks allowed at the end of retreat. So the Katina duration lasts only 29 days or only one month. That is why it is called timely generosity, timely dana, kala dana, kala tin. So katina is a kala dana because it is timely, it has a specific date. Uh, after one month you cannot, uh, the, the, the ceremony that you celebrate, it cannot be called a katina. The rope that you offer to the monk beside this uh, duration of one month cannot be called a uh, katina rope, but it, it, it is just a normal rope offering. The sangha are not allowed to request the offering, so it is important that the initiation of the offering and its organization be done entirely by the lay people. Actually, the ceremony is held in such high esteem that it is rare that the katina doesn't take place, and supporters will usually agree on a date with the abode of the monastery well in advance. The cloth, according to the Buddha's advice, must be offered to the whole sangha, not to any particular individual. So the bhikkhus, the monks, have to formally agree as to which of them should receive clothes. About three meters of clothes are, in, are needed, enough to make up at least one of the main robes. Once the clothes has been offered, the entire community tries to take part in the activity of sewing the new robe. It is being stipulated that this robe be cut soon, soon and finished before the dawn of the next day. Until recent times, finishing always involved dyeing the rope as well, and even today in traditional forest monasteries in Burma, Thailand, Cambodia, white cloth is given, and while some of the pikus are cutting and sewing, others are preparing baths of neutral dye. So, on the day of the festival, people begin arriving at monastery early. Some may have come the night before. Pikus and nuns from other monasteries 
will have been invited and been gathering also about 10 or 9 30 or 10 a.m everyone is beginning to set tall and around 30 10 30 a.m a lunch is offered to the sangha which is tomorrow i'm talking about the tomorrow event so people will offer the breakfast and then lunch normally we'll start like nine o'clock over to the sangha and then everyone helps themselves to the remainder of the food about 1 p.m. The ceremonial offering of the clothes and requisite take place with one donor leading the assembly of lay people in taking the refuges and precepts and then announcing the offering using the following formula. This would be done in both English or maybe Pali language or Khmer language. May we, venerable sirs, present these robes together with the other requisites to the Sangha. So, Venerable Sirs, please accept these robes and the other requisite from us for our long-lasting welfare and happiness. The cloth is formally presented to two pikus to have been agreed upon by the Sangha. In turn, they announce the donation of all the Katina offerings and then nominate one senior and well-respected member of the community to receive the robe once it has been made up. The unanimous agreement in silence by the Sangha is strict strengthened by the collective utterance of Satu, it is well said. At this point, some of the people leave and begin cutting the clothes. Later, others will join them. The former Sangha Ek, which is called Sangha Kama, of receiving Katina offering will be completed later in the evening, sometimes very late depending on the weather. When finished, robe ceremonially presented to the appointed Pico. So those who are wise, generous, and free from selfishness, give at the appropriate times, then what is given to those who are worthy and morally sound is an offering of the great purity and substance. Those who likewise show appreciation or perform acts of service make no less uh, suffering, and they also share in this merit. Thus in giving, the heart is unbounded. What is given is of great fruit and benefits, and those meritorious deeds bring about good fortune in life to come. And also the Buddha said there are five benefits that lay devotee, lay donors or all donors who have donated the Katina robe to the monks can gain the five benefits as follows. One is longevity, ayu. They gain the blessing of living a long life. Secondly, the blessing of good complexion or nobility, vanna. And third is sukha, happiness, living happily because you give Robe, you give donation to other, you make other live well and happy, so in return you also get that. And for number four, you also will get blessed with the strengths, physical strengths and mental strengths, and finally, wisdom. So, because in the whole ceremony involved all activity according to the rules and disciplinary led by the Buddha, so it is uh, really beneficial that we know how to do it and by so doing, we gain more wisdom and understanding. So like today, you all have gathered here to monastery and learn to perform ceremonial uh, celebration according to Buddhism and also according to the Cambodian culture. So I think this should be enough for uh, explanation because we are running out uh, of time. So I would like to appreciate all of you, especially the young people who have uh, participated in today's event. And I hope that in the next Katina or in any other ceremony in our monastery, we'll see all of you present in the, in the temple. So, the Chneska Ribro of Bachyam Bakarana, that tongue and the Tian Chibisa on Labor Man, but next on Pramahatai, Tian Trip. Sad Ho, Sad Ho, Sad Ho, Panam Dang Tamai.